Hello everyone, welcome to Thai Finance. Today I will show you how to do a horizontal analysis of a profit and loss statement. Here we have a, a basic profit and loss statement where we have the revenues, the cost of goods sold, gross margin, SGNA, and until we get to net income. <clears throat> what is a horizontal analysis? So a horizontal analysis is a basic analytical tool to analyze the PNL, also called the profit and loss statement, and the income statement. And this is good to evaluate an organization's past financial performance present financial conditions to project future evolution. This is very good to get a comparative percentage of all the items involved in, in the income statement. So where all the income statement items figures for a base years equal to 100, which will be 2018 and subsequent financial statement items in this case 2019 and 2020 are expressed as percentages of their values in comparison to the base year so all income statement items will be divided by the base year to see the percentage changes and this is a useful tool to evaluate the trend situations and take better managerial decisions so we can trigger action and solve problems that are draining our own profits. Let's start this analysis. And for this, I just prepare this uh, profit and loss statement. I will unhide some cells that I have previously prepared. And this way we can start doing our trend analysis. So as you can see, here is the 100%, which 2018 will be our base year. And we will compare the other two years with 2018. So for this, I just converted this cell into a percentage and we it's can do press and drag down or in, in another case would be press shift and, and with the down arrow, you select the other cells while pressing shift and then press command D. So it's like command down and it will copy. You can basically see a, the same result here. So now we'll, we're going to start in 2019. The, the purpose here is that we will compare all the items this year with the base year, which is 2018. So to do that, we have to do another formula as well. I put this, I just wrote this example for you to, to know what I'm doing, right? So in this case, we'll multiply 1,250 times 100 because this is a percentage and we will divide it by the base year. So let's start. So now we press shift zero, which is the same as equal to. So we're telling Excel that we will start a formula and then we will select this cell, multiply it by 100%, which is the base year and divide it by the first year's revenues. And in this case, we will get a result of 114% which is the increase of sales from one year to another, right? In order to complete the other sales, it is as well, we will apply the same te technique. We will either press and drag down, or even we can press and hold shift. Hold shift with the down arrows, we will select the other cells, and then we press command D. Okay, and then we have these little corners telling us that there's like something going on. But what we can do is just select all of them and ignore the error, right? Because the reason Excel is warning us about an error is because the, there is a formula in those cells, but it doesn't matter. Then to audit the cells, we would like to see, for example, we can see here that in R&D we have all the years the same, it remained equal. In this case, this, there was an increase in sales, so it was up. And then we can audit a cell. So I'm pressing Control U, and we can audit the cell. And then we press Enter, and then we can. I press again Control U, and it's the same formula in all the items. Control U, and it's fine. Finally, we will do the last year, and we will apply the same thing. We'll just press Equal to tell Excel that I'm initializing a formula, and then I will select the the year that I want to to start 
multiplied by 100, the base year, and divided by the revenues of the base year. Then we just select Control D. And then here we have our PL with all the sales field. But what is the purpose of doing a trend analysis? The thing is that sometimes we get lost with many, many numbers. Sometimes it's okay to diminish the visual contamination of a PL, which is that there's like a lot of numbers and we get lost with them. First of all, I want to make it easier for you guys. So what we're going to do is just continue with the format that we have which is a thick bottom border in this case as well. This is great to help our eyes to see where are we in the PNL, see what is going on with our PNL. And this way now we're almost complete. I want to make a small parenthesis to remind you to subscribe to the channel, to hit the thumbs up, to get the best financial education. And that's it. Okay, guys. So now we're, I want to continue with our analysis. I want you guys to hide this cells because this way we can avoid all the contamination of the PNL and start marking the cells that we find suspicious, right? So I'm going to hide them for the moment and then we will be able to analyze all the changes throughout the years, right? So in the first year we see an increase of revenue which is very, very good, right? And then we can press, let's say, let's check this cell and say, okay, everything looks great here. But then we see the cost of goods sold. And then we see that there's like a, a dramatic increase from this year to this year. Now here we have a big change. So I think I will mark it with a exclamation mark to check it later if it's something good, because it's normal that when you sell more, the cost of go goods sold increased, but well, it's draining our margins and that's that appears to be the case. Because normally when cost of goods sold are big, it's because you're maybe purchasing your products at a higher price or you're being inefficient in your production process in a manufacturing company, for example. It's something that we should take a look at. Then the gross margin, well, of course, we need to mark it down. Then in the administration, Department, well, everything looks okay. No increases or decreases. In the R&D as well, it looks fine. It didn't change anything. Then in the marketing expenses, well, it increased, but at a slow pace. And it's okay because we increased sales. So I think the marketing department helped us to sell more, right? So I, I guess I will put it okay. Then in the selling department, it looks great as well because there was an increase in sales, but it didn't change dramatically. So I think I will press OK. And here we can audit as well. It's like I'm a neutral. Let's let's say I'm neutral. Then in general expenses, I think everything looks great as well and didn't change anything. So in selling general administrative at the end, <clears throat> you don't see a huge change even though we increase the marketing department, right? So I guess it's also fine. So the EBITDA, well, that decreased incredibly. So here is with where the problems are, and it comes from the cost of goods sold. The amortization is the same, the EBIT, it's okay. The financial expenses, well, we increase them a bit because I guess that we're struggling with revenues, I guess, when we're financing, it's always good to look with the, our relationship with the banks and not be insolvent. Then the tax, well, well, in this case, we're not making any money, so we cannot pay taxes if we don't make money. It's just, we just need to look at the past items. And the net income, of course, it's worrying because even though we increase sales, uh, something's wrong because we're not having profits, right? So now that we have our financial let's say our, our trend analysis, our horizontal analysis, then we can open up once again the PNL and now we can get into the details. For example, here we, we said that we have to look at the cost of goods sold. We're going in a good pace because we're selling more, but then we increased dramatically. And in this case, we increased our cost of goods sold 
even at the same level at the first of the first year's revenue. Really here is the problem, right? In the cost of goods sold. And then of course with the marketing department uh, increases, well, it doesn't help as well. So now we have uh, some conclusions to tackle. And most important thing that we have to tackle is the cost of goods sold. So we have to decrease our costs dramatically. The next step would be uh, to project the future evolution of the PNL. In this case, I will do it in another video. So please let me know in the comments below if you are interested in me doing this video for you guys. So in conclusion, trend analysis helped us basically to basically avoid all the noise of the numbers that someone could get lost and make, make it easy for us to understand our present and past financial performance. So we can take decisions and trigger the action to fix our financial problems. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video and please subscribe to the channel, comment below, hit the thumbs up, nothing costs you. This is really easy for you and you will help me to increase the number of subscribers, guys. So thank you so much again and I hope you stay well.